An exclusive showing of hundreds of Winston Churchill papers called The Power of Words is at the Pierpont Morgan Library from June 8 to mid-September. Alan Packwood, director of the Churchill Archives at Churchill College in Cambridge, England, chose from the 2,000 boxes of materials Churchill preserved. Packwood is here in New York City to speak eloquently about Churchill, the man, the writer, the New York City visitor who ended one visit in Lenox Hill Hospital when hit by a car on Fifth Avenue. A series of lectures, underwritten by New York City resident and patron Tina Flaherty, and called the Tina Santi Flaherty Winston Churchill Literary Series, is currently being held at Roosevelt House in New York City, Hunter College, and the Morgan Library. Speakers included William Griswold, director of the Morgan Library and Museum, Professor Sir Lezik Borishevitz, Vice Chancellor, University of Cambridge, and London Mayor Boris Johnson. Education Update held exclusive interviews after the introduction with series sponsor Tina Santi Flaherty and the Honorable Edwina Sandys, Churchill's granddaughter. It is my privilege to welcome you to tonight's reception for a wonderful new exhibition, Churchill, The Power of Words. The exhibition is a celebration of one of the great men of all time. The letters, drafts, typescripts, and other artifacts that are included in the show vividly demonstrate the extent to which the power of words underpinned Winston Churchill's remarkable achievement as a leader, a statesman, an orator, an historian, and a hugely gifted writer. The exhibition pays homage to the power of words, but it also presents the story of an extraordinary man. It is about a dark and terrible period in our history. It is about freedom and resistance to tyranny, and it is about the deep and lasting friendship that binds America and the United Kingdom. The curator of the show is Alan Packard, director of the Churchill Archive Center and executive director of the Churchill Center. I can imagine no better partner, and it would be impossible to overstate our gratitude either to him or to his colleagues. In addition, I would like to thank Declan Kiley, Robert Taylor, curator and head of the Department of Literary and Historical Manuscripts here at the Morgan, who coordinated every aspect of the project on our end. This was no mean feat, and the results speak for themselves. I also wish to acknowledge Mark Leslie and his firm Martello Media for designing the installation and the rich multimedia components of that installation as I would Michael Norwich for his help since the inception of the project. Andrew Roberts has similarly shared his expertise at every stage. While most of the loans in the exhibition are from the Churchill Archive Center, others are from Sir Winston's house at Chartwell. And for these, I wish to thank the National Trust, as well as members of the Churchill family. Moreover, we are indebted to Kenneth Rendell for his willingness to lend three works from his collection. That this ambitious project has come to fruition is due to the generosity of many, and it is my privilege to express our collective appreciation to all those without whose munificent support of this exhibition it would not have seen the light of day. In particular, I'd like to thank Tony and Anna Wilde, Richard and Rone Menchel, Tina Santi Flaherty, the Winston Churchill Foundation, and Richard Kaplan and Edwina Sands. And that's not all. We're also hugely grateful uh, for the support of the Gladys Creeble Delmas Foundation. Robert Bradford and Barbara Taylor Bradford, Doug and Delphine Daft, Sherry Parker Lee, Tim Wallach, and Laura and Adrian Weller. We are very pleased that so many supporters of the show are here with us this evening, and it is my great honor to introduce a number of other very special guests. Sir Winston Churchill's 
granddaughters, Celia and Edwina Sands, are here to represent the Churchill family. Boris Johnson, Mayor of London, is here with us just days after the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. And a little, little more than a month before the Summer Olympics, so we're particularly pleased. Uh, I'm also uh, delighted to acknowledge from the University of Cambridge, Sir Leszek Borysiewicz, Vice Chancellor, uh, from whom we'll hear more in just a moment, as well as Lord Watson, High Steward, and Sir David Wallace, Master of Churchill College. <laughs> I'd like to recognize Sir Mark Lyle Grant, British Ambassador to the United Nations. And finally, I wish to extend a warm welcome to Caroline Kennedy, whose father made Sir Winston an honorary citizen of the United States in 1963. Uh, uh, Tom Putnam, director of the Kennedy Library, is here with us as well. <laughs> Sir Leszek Borysiewicz is the 345th Vice Chancellor in the 800-year history of the University of Cambridge. Born and educated in Wales to Polish parents, Sir Leszek made his reputation as a lecturer and then professor in medicine, before becoming principal of the Faculty of Medicine and then deputy rector at Imperial College London. He was knighted in 2001 and appointed Vice Chancellor at Cambridge in 2010. He sits ex officio on many boards, and these include the trust that holds and administers the Churchill Papers. It has been a tremendous pleasure to work with the Churchill Archives Center, and it is an honor to introduce the head of the university to speak on behalf of our partners. Uh, Your Excellency, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen. I speak on behalf of the UK partner, and I am joined to here today with a very strong delegation from Cambridge, which includes our High Steward uh, of the University, Lord Watson, and the Master of Churchill College, Sir uh, David Wallace. Now, the University of Cambridge knows a thing or two about history. We kind of have been marching alongside it for nearly 800 years. In the university's great libraries, museums, and collections, we are history's curators. And in laboratories and boardrooms and parliaments, our faculty and alumni create it every day. It is therefore from a position of confidence that I can look around this exhibition and declare, this, ladies and gentlemen, is history. The exhibition, brings together some of the most resonant documents, artifacts, and recordings of the 20th century. I defy anyone to hear Churchill's voice without response from the hairs on the back of your neck. One of the glories of Cambridge is the diversity of excellence evident in the different characters of the 31 colleges, each of which is unique. Churchill College has an exceptional place. It was founded as the National Memorial to Sir Winston, and it houses the Churchill Archive Center. Now, what's also special about Churchill College is that it houses not only Sir Winston's papers, but also the papers of Lady Thatcher and Sir John Major, frankly making it the equivalent of three US presidential libraries rolled into one. Most of the items in this exceptional exhibition are on loan from the center, and we are proud to show them off to you here. There can be no doubt that the Morgan has one of the greatest collections of art and manuscripts in the United States. And we have found it the perfect venue for one of Cambridge University's great collections. I would like to personally thank the director, William Griswold, the trustees and the staff of the Morgan Library Museum for being such a wonderful exhibition partner. 
My colleagues on the Cambridge side have told me how much they enjoyed working with you, uh, and they have a particular appreciation for the work of Declan Keeley, curator of the literary and historical manuscripts. I'm told it seems that everything that was not said by Churchill was said instead by George Bernard Shaw, <laughs> to whom we must attribute the observation that England and America are two countries separated by the same language. <laughs> Declan, you've done an amazing job in translating between American and British English. I'm also delighted that this enterprise has been supported by so many Cambridge alumni. It would certainly not have been possible without the support of Tony Wilde and his wife Anna, and the website created by Michael Norwich adds a very special and important dimension. Visitors to this exhibition will have a unique foretaste of another exciting development for us, the Churchill Archive Online. The comprehensive digital uh, archive will be fully searchable on a bank of computers for the duration of the exhibition. But in the coming weeks, the entirety of the Churchill Archive, though physically held in Cambridge, will be made available online throughout the world. Finally, I'm delighted to pay homage to the power of his words before members of his family, and to thank Celia and Edwina for all they've contributed to this great venture. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Winston Churchill, statesman, orator, author, and historian, was conscious always of the impact made by today upon tomorrow. From the latter standpoint, and informed by the rich legacy of historical material he has left us, we can look back in gratitude and salute him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Horace Johnson, Mayor of London, really needs no introduction, and if he did, I couldn't hope to do justice to his many and varied accomplishments. I will say just two things. Like Winston Churchill's mother, he was born in New York. And his most recent book, Johnson's Life of London, The People Who Made the City That Made the World, includes a chapter on Sir Winston. It is a privilege to give him the podium to officially inaugurate the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, good evening, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great, great pleasure uh, and honor to be here tonight uh, amongst you all uh, with members of the, the Churchill dynasty here as well. Uh, the trouble with the cult of Winston Churchill is that he is not only uh, a legitimator and a justifier for just about any political point of view that you care to hold, I and mean, he can be quarried like the Bible for just about any kind of uh, ideology that you wish to, to support. But also, by his life, he becomes an excuse, or he has become an excuse, for just about any kind of behavior uh, in, po in politics. And if you, it's perfectly true that if you give way to an embarrassing burst of blooding, uh, as some politicians do over their tax affairs or whatever it happens to be on television. You can always say that Winston Churchill was famously lacrimose, uh, or if, if, you, if you are rude, unforgivably rude to someone, uh, as sometimes we are, uh, I would say, Churchill was rude, wasn't he? Massively, massively, famously rude. Uh, if you... Uh, if you, if you smoke, in a way that would not now be tolerated in, uh, in Bloomberg in New York, uh, uh, you can point out that Churchill was a, was a, heroic, uh, a heroic smoker. Uh, if, you, if you consume more calories uh, per day than I think would be tolerated if I read the papers correctly, uh, in, this, in, the, in, in this great city, Churchill, he, you know, he, he was a, a great, great, uh, a great trencherman. If you, if you are guilty of cock-ups of one kind or another, as all of us politicians are, aren't we? If you're guilty of the old, of the old cock-up, you can, you can always point out that Churchill had Gallipoli. And, but, 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 
The only thing, in fact, and I, I, I've had the benefit of, of, of asking uh, distinguished Churchillian historians who are here tonight just to, to help me out on this, and, and they, confirm, they confirm this point, the, the, the learned gentleman here, the only way in which Churchill did not help us succeeding generations of, of politicians is, as far as we know, he never committed any kind of indiscretion with a Downing Street typist. And, and, uh, and, 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 is that right, Andrew? That's right. So, so there you go. Uh, and the question, the question is, I'm seeing some nods of, that's right. Uh, the question is why? Why is his reputation so uh, formidable? And what was it about his words, to get to the point of the exhibition, what was it about his words that made them so powerful and so thrilling to his listeners? And I will tell you, uh, and you, you can read more about this as Bill has just pointed out in, uh, in Johnson's Life of London Available, all good outlets. Uh, uh, I will t I'll tell you why his words were so powerful, because they were short. They were short. And uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples. Uh, never in the field of human conflict has so much been known by so many to so few. I have nothing but of blood, toil, tears, and sweat. 27 words. How many Latin words? Only three. Only three. Or I'll, I'll give you another one. Uh, we shall fight them on the beaches. All the other words, Anglo-Saxon in, in their origin. We shall fight them on the beaches. We shall fight them on the landing grounds. We shall fight them in the fields and in the streets. We shall never surrender. How many Latin words? How many words for romance origin in that great, great? How many? One? One. Which one is it? Surrender, exactly. Uh, and in, in his in it, Churchill mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. Because, because, and he created the idea of the Anglo-Saxon world, which we celebrate tonight, and that great union uh, between, between uh, our country and uh, my country and, and, and America. But, and he created the idea of the Anglosphere because Churchill spoke, for the most part, most powerfully and most effectively, when he spoke in pure Anglo-Saxon. That was when it, that was, and, that, and that, that is my point, that's my thesis, that's the message I have for you tonight about the power of oratory of Winston Churchill, power of speech, I should say, to stick in Anglo-Saxon, of, of, Winston, of Winston Churchill. Uh, that's my point, I'm, I'm sticking to it, and you'll be re relieved to know that this is not the beginning of my speech. <laughs> or even the beginning of the middle. Uh, of my speech, or, in the, or indeed the end of the beginning of the middle, but this is, this is the end of my speech, ladies and gentlemen, and the beginning of a wonderful exhibition on which I congratulate all the organisers. Thank you very much. Renaissance Venice, Drawings from the Morgan, is on view in the gallery opposite the show. We celebrate tonight. Our original 1906 library behind me also is open, as is the shop. Uh, there you will find uh, a book by Sir Martin Gilbert Churchill, The Power of Words, which is an edition of Sir Winston's writings chosen to complement this exhibition. And Lord Watson, Celia Sands, Peter Clark, David Reynolds, Barry Singer, and Andrew Roberts are on hand to sign copies of their books uh, at a table just outside the shop. Thank you all. Enjoy the evening.